considering artificial intelligence is just everything the market is discussing. The hype, the reality, how much have actually you been building in AI already? Yes, I think so many companies are using AI now. And there's one thing that's really irrefutable, and it is that corporate America really sits upon antiquated technology. And by that, I mean that if you look at across almost any industry, legacy companies that are the market leaders are incredibly asset heavy and have yet to adopt technological innovation. So you see that by looking at successful new market entrants like Magnify and others and how asset light they are. And you see that new companies leverage and capitalize their efficiencies on technologies that are available. And they do that in their business models, they do that in their go-to-market strategy, and there's tremendous value to be created by investing wisely on, on that convergence. You've been investing, I'm sure, wisely, but certainly you think wisely when you're a VC, of course, Castle VC. I'm interested in why special purpose acquisition companies are a way to invest at this moment, considering the amount of, well, hits they've taken from a PR perspective, shall I call it? Yeah, I mean, look, we, as a SPAC, we look for, for great companies that have what I described earlier, scalable and innovative technologies. They have attractive business models and attractive go-to-market strategies that are going to prove to be uh, really wonderful investments by virtue of the differentiated value that they're going to provide. And, um, and by the way, a lot of those companies contribute to the standard of living, and this is what we invest in in our SPACs. Okay, so at Athena, you're supported by an advisory board, women-led, founders, operators, venture capitalists, investment bankers. Who is in your network and why do they want to help? Yeah, we are all women, but frankly, my, my approach has been that the fact that we are all women is neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we have done is we have put together what we believe is the most formidable SPAC platform with 30 or so executives across vehicles that have been on boards of companies such as Citigroup, um, Oracle, Comcast, Edna, Johnson & Johnson, American Airlines, WeWork, BlackRock, and, and many more public and private companies. We've had founders of companies. We had the co-founder of Guilds, the co-founder of Shift, the company that also went public through SPAC. A dozen of founders of companies whose names you would recognize. And we've had multiple vehicles. For example, we had a vertical consumer vehicle where we had the former U.S. CEO of De Beers, former president of Givenchy, former CEO of Steinmartz, former president of Old Navy, former CEO of Peapod, grocery delivery company. They had a billion in revenues. We had regulators. Um, so these are all accomplished leaders that help our combination partners and who are on our boards and, <clears throat> and, um, and really create long-term um, value and provide a full platform yeah. that the combination partners can leverage on. How hard has that been to persuade public market investors in SPACs? I mean, look, the SPAC market has been, first you have to understand the specific market environment that created where we are, the, 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 the environment where we are now. Um, mm -hmm. The proliferation of SPACs in particular, three years ago, interest rates were low and investors were seeking yields and we saw a number of SPACs that came to market yet um, many have liquidated. In the last 12 months, 158 SPACs have liquidated. That's a lot. Um, now, today, we're facing, again, fear of inflation, rising interest rates, a Fed that had its credibility somewhat tarnished, mm -hmm. and equity markets that really took a hit and particularly corrected were the risks on investments that investors are willing to take. So half of the SPAC deals that closed in 2020 and 2021 had very little revenues, uh, or if no revenues for some, and they got crushed. Um, and that's not unique to SPACs. If you look at IPOs, same, you know, I IPOs and SPACs that went public in 2020 and 2021 are all down 45%. So that doesn't mean they were bad companies, but the investment community moved from risk on to risk off. So do you have to wait for the pendulum to swing back? Or how can you now look for new targets, new companies that you think even in a more difficult macroeconomic environment can thrive? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think this, is, uh, this is what we're going to continue to see in, in 2023. And we're going to continue to see a lot of liquidations. Mm -hmm. And because we still have this volume of specs, I think we're going to continue to see um, a pickup in the pace of announced deals. And we're starting to see that right now. 
uh, in our own SPACs and, and for others, because there's a backlog of companies that wants to access capital. And relative to private equity and venture capital, SPACs are providing really an opening of a window into what is the largest pool of investors in the world. So if you look at 2022, for example, there were under 20 IPOs, but 200 SPAC deals, about 100 that closed and about 100 that were announced. So it remains a way to go public. So I, I anticipate that this will continue.